Welcome to Introduction to Accounting for a User's Perspective. What are the common forms of ownership structure in the United States and what are some advantages and disadvantages of each? Partnerships. The following discussion will focus on the key characteristics and the advantages and disadvantages of partnerships. You should use the Summary of Business Structures table to guide you as you learn more about partnerships. Shared decision-making authority. Partnerships have two or more owners, i.e. partners, that share decision-making authority. A single partner has the legal ability to enter contracts and sign agreements that obligate all the partners in the partnership. This shared decision-making legal authority can be a disadvantage to the other partners if a given partner enters into contracts they do not approve of. In addition, once a sole proprietor chooses to join a partnership, she loses sole decision authority for the partnership because other partners will be making decisions as well. Easy setup. Partnerships like sole proprietorships can be set up quite easily and require no significant bureaucratic forms or paperwork, i.e. commonly referred to as red tape. In fact, partnerships simply need two or more individuals who choose to become partners in a business endeavor and they can become a partnership. For example, if two teenagers decide to become part owners of a babysitting business with both contributing resources and or time and both sharing in the profits, their partnership would be formed. Partnerships can have as few as two partners or as many as several thousand partners and are often used by professionals. Minimal regulations. As with sole proprietorships, states do require partnerships to obtain state sales tax or state excise tax licenses. In Hawaii, the form used for partnerships is the same for sole proprietorships. As with sole proprietorships, partnerships have no significant regulatory financial reporting requirements unless they hire employees. Although not required by law, potential partners would be wise to create a partnership agreement in which partners agree to the name and nature of the business, their day-to-day -day operational commitment, what capital they will contribute, how profits and losses will be shared, how and when the partnership will terminate, and how disputes will be resolved. Partnership agreements, especially between lifelong friends, are very important because once two or more people enter into a partnership, they are legally bound to each other until the partnership is dissolved. More complete lists of what should be included on partnership agreements are provided on the internet. Here's one example, also known as the article of co-partnership from about.com, that you can click on here. In addition, they have no legal requirement to submit their financial statements to any external parties, including the SEC, except to comply with tax reporting laws or to comply with contractual agreements. Single taxation. You should have already watched the sole proprietorship video, which will help you see that partnerships are single taxed in a similar manner to sole proprietorships, so some of this should be a review. All the partnership's net income is attributed to the individual partners every year based on the partnership agreement. And this attributed net income is what the partners will be taxed on in their individual tax returns. This attribution of income does not mean that the partnership made a capital distribution to the partners. No money was withdrawn. It just means that the partners will receive a tax document indicating the amount of income attributed to them from the partnership so that they can report it and pay taxes on it in their personal tax return. Therefore, the income of partnerships is subject to single taxation just like sole proprietorships. Single taxation is an advantage of partnerships. Now, when a partner actually needs funds out of the partnership to be used for personal reasons, such as to buy a boat, the partnership can make a capital distribution to him or her, which is similar to the payment of a dividend by a corporation. But unlike dividends from corporations, capital distributions to partners are not taxable. Capital distributions reduce the partnership's total assets and will reduce the specific partner's equity claims against the partnership. High access to expertise. Professionals such as accountants, attorneys, and doctors tend to operate as partnerships. Small shops and service businesses also tend to set up as partnerships. For example, Hewlett Packard began as a partnership in a garage with an initial capital investment of $538.
Depending on the size of the partnership and the number of partners in it, the individual partners may or may not be heavily involved in the day-to-day -day operational decisions and the accounting for the business. Large partnerships often have a managing partner or a team of partners who focuses on the operational side of running the partnership, thus freeing up the other partners to focus on revenue generation and client service. Partners vote on significant partnership-wide decisions or on changes to the partnership agreement. Because no limit exists on the number of partners in a partnership, partnerships have the advantage of having greater access to expertise than sole proprietorships have. Limited access to capital. Partnerships have an advantage over sole proprietorships in that they have more partners to access capital from. This access is not as great as what is available to corporations, as we'll learn later, but it has the potential of being significantly more than that of sole proprietorships. Unlimited legal liability. The partners in a partnership have the same level of legal liability for the partnership's unpaid debts as a sole proprietor does for the debts of a sole proprietorship. What makes a partnership especially risky from a legal standpoint is that any single partner could potentially enter into an agreement or create a significant liability to obligate the other partners. This is called mutual agency. It effectively means that each partner can fully act as an agent on behalf of the partnership. Key point. Partnerships are not legally separate entities from the partner's personal resources, and therefore any debts of the partnership are actually debts of the partners resulting in the same risk to personal assets that sole proprietors experience. Potentially unlimited life. Although partnerships theoretically have a limited life, which could end upon the death of, termination by, or withdrawal of a partner, it is not uncommon for partnerships to last much longer than any one of the original founding partners, because as one partner leaves, voluntarily or otherwise, new partners can be admitted in their place. Difficult transfer of ownership. As with sole proprietorships, someone cannot simply take over the partnership, but rather they can purchase the assets and liabilities of the partnership or they can become a new partner of the partnership when the other partners agree to it, which agreement is not always easy to receive. We will discuss limited liability partnerships, LLPs, and limited liability companies in a later topic.